I'm Nancy Toff, president of the New York Flute Club, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to the next concert in our 101st season. This is a season of new beginnings in many ways, and for us, it is a second century, which we celebrate today with a Baroque recital by Janet C., who comes to us today from Bainbridge Island in Washington with her colleague, harpsichordist Jalan Stopples Dupree. Uh, I also want to remind you of our upcoming deadlines for our younger generation for both our Young Musicians Contest and our New York Flute Club competition, which has helped to launch the careers of so many talented flutists over the last 40 plus years. Please visit our website for all the details and uh, deadlines. And so now uh, let us celebrate our new season with a wonderful program of Baroque flute music. Thank you for joining us. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining Jalan and me for this concert, which is the first for both of us in almost a year. Needless to say, it's a joy to play there together again and to play for you. This concert is coming to you from Bainbridge Island, which is a beautiful small island just off of Seattle and has been a great place to weather the pandemic. I would like to thank Nancy Toth and the New York Flute Club for inviting us to play on this series. It's unusual to single out one movement of a sonata to include in a program, but ever since reading through Quance's beautiful B minor larghetto sometime last fall, the piece has remained with me as a particularly beautiful movement with which to begin this program. Especially following the past year, we all managed in one way or another to get through.
Georg Philippe Telemann was an immensely prolific composer, and perhaps because of this, his name has often been associated with less than the highest quality compositions. But in his time, Telemann was highly regarded by colleagues and critics alike, not only in Germany, but also in the rest of 18th century Europe. Theorists considered his works models of compositions, and major composers such as J.S. Bach and Handel uh, bought and studied his published works. Some of my favorite Baroque chamber music, such as the Paris Quartets, was written by Telemann, and his 12 methodical sonatas are a welcome addition to our 18th century flute repertoire. Uh, these pieces are entitled methodical sonatas because Telemann added to each first movement his own highly ornamented version of the original melodic line, supplying, with this, uh, supplying us with a method for ornamentation. Personally, I feel that including all of his ornamentation in a performance can obscure the melodic line and create a rather dizzying effect. And so my approach is to choose those ornaments that I feel add to the beauty and the development of the line. And sometimes I add my own ornaments. So here's an example of uh, the first two bars of the piece we're going to play. Here's the simple line.
operas, instrumental music, uh, and oh, of course lots of vocal music. He also wrote several suites, several publications of uh, harpsichord music, keyboard music, and uh, particularly in the 1720s and 1730s these were published. Some of them are called suites, which indicates dance movements, minuets, courants, etc. And then some of them are Italianate, so they're called sonatas in some uh, original sources. Uh, this suite, the F major suite, which I'm going to play two, from which I'm going to play two movements, was actually took he took a combination of the pieces. So some of them are called by dance uh, names, and others uh, by the Italian names, such as Adagio or Presto. And the pieces I'm going to play are the Adagio, which is it actually starts this sweet slash sonata and uh, to me it sounds like a soprano voice or an instrument improvising with this accompaniment of soft strings underneath it and it's really quite improvisatory and in, in, almost in an Italian 17th century style quite amazingly ornate and then uh, the courant is not like a typical French courant where you have lots of syncopations and uh, heniolas it's more like an Italianate Presto.
But the last three pieces on our program are transcriptions, that is, pieces originally written for another instrument. There was quite a lot of flexibility of instrumentation in 18th century composition. You may have noticed that um, title pages to suites or sonatas by French composers in particular often list the contents as playable on the flute, or the oboe, or the recorder, or the violin, or the musette, etc. Le Rossignol en Amour, or the Nightingale in Love, is originally a keyboard, uh, keyboard piece found in Couperin's 14th order. The composer himself wrote in his introduction, this Rossignol can be performed with the greatest possible success on the flute when it is well played. We're very fortunate to have, from Johann Sebastian Bach, six organ trios. That is, it's a trio sonata in which the organist plays in their right hand the top trio sonata part, in their left hand the middle part, if you would, and then on the pedals, what we would consider 
in a trio sonata sort of format, the bass line. This one is a transcription of the first sonata in E flat major, and this is transcribed into G major. And uh, in this uh, situation, Janet is playing what would be the right hand part of the organist's hands, and I, in my right hand, I'm playing the left hand part, and then in the left hand, I'm, in my left hand, I'm playing the pedal part. It's a wonderful color change from what you would hear if you hear it on the organ.
Syrinx by Claude Debussy was the first piece composed for solo flute after CPE Bach's solo sonata in A minor. So that was a span of many years. Last spring, I was asked by Early Music Seattle if I could envision playing Syrinx on the Baroque flute as part of a concert entitled For All Our Sisters, which was a concert honoring powerful women in our collective past and present, especially those whose voices have been silenced by histories mostly male, gatekeepers, and myth-makers. The nymph Syrinx is pursued by Pan, who wants her for himself. To escape his clutches, Syrinx flees into a marsh where she turns into a reed in order to avoid capture. And in his distress, Pan cuts the reed and fashions it into a pan pipe, upon which he plays this sad lament. The style of the piece is ornamental and very improvisatory. In fact, it's thought that WC wrote it without bar lines or breaths, and that these may have been added later by Moise. The Baroque flute checks all the boxes, as it were, naturally providing the color, the timbre, and the emotion inherent in this piece. I've had to transpose the piece up a half step but since the pitch of the Baroque flute is a half step lower than modern pitch, I actually end up, end up playing syrinx at the same pitch as a modern flute. In this transposition, there are two instances of a low C sharp, which I cannot play on this flute, but I have substituted an E flat. I'm sure you'll hear those spots. So I hope you enjoy this new take on Debussy's syrinx. And thank you again for joining us for this concert.